What up 2K fans? This is just a quick video discussing how that next gen NBA 2K21 My Player Builder might be a huge game changer. A lot of people are discussing how you have so much freedom now that there's no more pie charts and how the attribute system looks like you have a lot of endless possibilities. Some guys saying that they might finally be able to make that build with a 95 driving dunk, a 95 three point shot, a 95 perimeter defense, and in the case of this 6-5 build that we're looking at, maybe even a 90 ball handling. Now judging from what we're seeing, there's definitely some limitations based on your height, weight, and wingspan. So you can't just make the ultimate build that has everything. But then again, we don't know how 2K21 on next gen actually plays. And quite frankly, if you are able to make a build like that, he might still play well, even with the sacrifice to the other remaining attributes. We're going to dive into that a little bit later. We're going to discuss some of the things that some of my friends and I have discovered and have been debating about over the last two days. So the first thing I want to share with you guys, if you missed it, some things have been moved or replaced. For example, when you look into the finishing category, we now have something called post control. And this more than likely covers post hooks, post fade and post moves. Because as you can see on current gen, post fade is in shooting and post moves is in playmaking, and both have been removed out of that category on next gen. But in this playmaking category, we now have this speed with ball attributes. This all used to be rolled into ball handling. I don't even wanna guess how that's gonna look with high ball handle with low speed with ball. Although you might be able to get away with a high speed with ball and low ball handling. Either way, I'm sure you won't be able to unlock the pro dribble packages without having a high ball handle. When we go down to defense, lateral quickness is gone. And for a lot of us guards or people that guard out on the perimeter, that was one of the most important categories. My guess is that it might be rolled into perimeter defense or might just be part of your speed and acceleration now. And then down at the bottom, you'll now notice that physicals are a part of your attribute list as well. And one thing I noticed during this little video clip was that stamina is now something you have to take into consideration. In the past, you didn't have to worry about stamina. It was always a 99, no matter what physical pie chart you chose. Now we don't see a numbered deduction of points, so we don't exactly know how many points you have at your disposal when it comes to your physical. So we're just gonna have to figure that out when the game comes out. But this guy made a build with no strength, very low vertical, and very low stamina. I hope the physicals elevate in time, but the physicals on this build look really bad. And that definitely leaves me with some concern because you might be able to make an all-round player with incredible offense and defense, but really bad stamina, low speed, and acceleration, that's gonna be terrible. And you guys know on this channel, we value speed and acceleration. Now there were some other areas of concern or areas that raised some questions, especially in terms of the Hall of Fame badges. It appears that Hall of Fame badges are based on attribute ratings. When we go into the defense category, Notice what badges he has access to on defense based on a 95 steal rating. He doesn't have access to all of them. With a low perimeter defense, he does not have access to clamps or ankle braces. However, he does have access to pickpocket and interceptor. When you go into the playmaking category, he's got like a 76 average across all attributes. So he can access them all, but he can't turn some into Hall of Fame. With an 80 ball handle and a 79 speed with ball, he can't get Hall of Fame quick first step, Hall of Fame tight handles, Hall of Fame ankle breaker, but he can get Hall of Fame floor general, space creator, and unpluckable. Now because he maxed out all of his shooting categories, he gets access to every badge on Hall of Fame. But if you look at the finishing category, he's got a 76 driving dunk. This means he doesn't get Hall of Fame posterizer, Hall of Fame highlight reel, or lob city. But with an 86 driving layup, he does get Hall of Fame Giant Slayer, Hall of Fame Teardropper, Hall of Fame Fearless Finisher. So your Hall of Fame badges are based on the level that you raise your attributes to. So definitely keep that in mind when you're making your first build. We're definitely gonna have to experiment with that My Player Builder when the game first drops on next gen. One thing that I can really appreciate, and I tweeted this out the other day, is that everything is on screen. So if I wanna share my build, I only have to show you guys one screenshot. In 2K20 and current gen 2K21, I'd have to show you like four. So this makes it way easier and quicker for build videos and easier for the community in general. 
And one more thing that me and my friends have been discussing that we really like is that a lot of these new badges are going to satisfy certain gamers who make certain builds. I didn't break down these badges in the courtside report, but we're going to do that here really quickly. Just some of the badges that really caught my eye. For example, Heat Seeker, which will help slashers build takeover faster. We've got Highlight Film, which boosts teammate takeover progress on flashy dunks. This is going to make you want to do flashy dunks more. I know some guys that can't stop doing flashy dunks and get blocked a lot. Then we have Rise Up. This boosts the ability to do standing dunks in traffic. There's a lot of guys that make bigs and they can't get a lot of standing dunk posterizers. There's a lot of guys that say their player can, but they just seem to not be able to do it. This badge is going to help a lot of builds get more standing dunk posterizers. This might make some of those interior forces or paint beasts that have like a 95 standing dunk seem overpowered especially how now they'll be dunking on you on a regular basis if you don't have a defensive center you're getting dunked on in the paint <laughs> all day and then we have antifreeze which makes it harder to get cold and lose your takeover meter progress might even reduce the chance of you losing your takeover as you're building it because now you got to stack your takeovers if you want to use both of them so antifreeze might be a great badge to use and then there's Rhythm Shooter, which boosts the shot percentage out of size ups as well as one step pull ups. So basically this gives you a boost if you shoot out of a size up or off the dribble. That's a great badge because a lot of us that run an offense or ISO at the top of the key, we want to shoot off the dribble, definitely want to have this on Hall of Fame. And then there's a Sniper Badge, which gives a boost to pro stick aiming. Now we already know that the modded control is the ultimate boost to pro stick aiming. But hopefully they can get that fixed for next gen. But this might pan out really good for a lot of you guys that want to use the pro stick aiming or trying to experiment with it. I'm staying away from it, but this could definitely work out for the guys who feel like they have to rely on it. I also like the stop and pop three badge, which gives you a boost to pull up threes in transition. There's already a lot of cherry picking on the 3v3s in 2k. And you might not really need to use this badge if your build's already a good shooter. But if you do use it, I can only imagine you're gonna end games a lot quicker, especially if your player's a good shooter. This is just another badge that'll combine with all your other badges and make you knock down threes even better. There's Bullet Passer, which lets you throw laser dots like LeBron James or in my opinion, Magic Johnson. I've been asking to be able to do bullet passes in general just by holding down the button of the player that you're passing to. I figured just, just like Madden Football bullet passes, I thought 2K could really benefit from that, but they've given me a lot of reasons why it doesn't work in their game, but now we have it as a badge. Now, it doesn't appear to replace Needle Threader because it's still in the game for next gen, but maybe it's just more animations, like a one-armed bullet bounce pass like Magic Johnson used to do. And finally, there's Ankle Braces, which makes it harder to get your ankles broken. Now, it was to my belief that Clamps used to cover that in all the previous 2Ks, so them making a badge for this Seems like they're trying to create a situation where more people get their ankles broke. If you notice, you can't get this on Hall of Fame if you just increase your steal rating. If you want to make sure you don't get your ankles broke, you better increase your perimeter defense. And I'm not sure that this is going to completely prevent you from getting your ankles took, especially if some playmakers in takeover, we've all seen it where lockdowns are in takeover and they still get their ankles took. But this could definitely persuade change in the way you fill your attribute bars because nobody wants to get embarrassed by getting your ankles broken. So this was just a quick recap of some of the things that I've been discussing with friends that I wasn't able to put in the initial video. I hope this makes certain things clearer. Of course, I don't know for sure that all of this information is correct. This is just coming from a trailer in a few seconds of the My Player Builder. At the end of the day, it shows a lot of promise. I definitely feel like there's more flexibility. It's a lot more complimentary badges and it really seems like we have to pay attention to how we make our builds now. I really like the idea of being able to get Hall of Fame badges in every category, but it appears you have to be smart about how you do things. So it's your boy Shake. If this video helped or cleared some things up for you, let me know in the comment section below. Smack that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. One of the dynamic duos that should be feared upon return, the Splash Brothers, Klay Thompson and Steph Curry. Klay Thompson at an 89, Steph Curry at a 95. Let me know in the comment section if you think they're going to be the team to beat the Lakers next year.